Hello, it's Mark with Mark's Astro Journey. I'm here to talk to you about Celestron's Power Seeker EQ 127 Reflector Telescope. This is the first telescope I bought, and I'll just go ahead right away up front and admit, when I bought this telescope, I didn't do enough research. I did look at some reviews online and read some of those, and also read the marketing and specification the details about the telescope but I was new to the hobby I didn't really have that much background knowledge and I should have got better educated so after owning the telescope there are a number of things I learned that caused me to come to the conclusion I made a mistake I shouldn't have bought this telescope I should have done more research I'm going to share 10 of those reasons with you and I created a series of brief videos sharing each of those reasons if you enjoy this video, you might want to look at some of the other reasons that I share about why you should reconsider purchasing this telescope. So let's get started. So one other thing that's interesting when you look this telescope up on the internet to purchase it, say on Amazon or somewhere like that, is in the description it says the Celestron Power Seeker 127EQ is an easy to use and powerful telescope. The 127 millimeter Newtonian reflector offers enough light gathering ability to see planets, the moon's craters, distant stars, the Orion Nebula, and more. The thing I want to focus in on is it says Newtonian reflector. Well, this is not really a, just a pure Newtonian telescope or reflector telescope because it doesn't have a parabolic mirror. So a parabolic mirror is a very well-crafted mirror. Its shape is very precise. It doesn't have aberrations. This mirror is not parabolic, and the shape is not very precise. It does have aberrations. So what this telescope really is is a Bird-Jones telescope. And the reason I say that is there's a corrector lens to deal with the fact that the primary reflector mirror is not parabolic. They put a, a lens actually inside this focusing tube. And normally in the Bird Jones, it's not even in the focuser tube. It's down inside. So by putting it in the focuser tube, every time you're moving your eyepiece with the focuser, you're also moving the corrector lens. So the corrector lens is actually thrown off. It's not able to do the accurate correction because the corrector lens is moving up and down in this tube. And so that's a big issue with the optics and why the optics are not very good. And I'll show you, I want to show you what that's like. To, to deal with that, um, when you're trying to do something that's very common with a, refra a reflector telescope. So if we spin it back around and we take off the end cap. Okay, so you can see inside the tube and you notice in the very back, there's a large mirror. It fills the very back end of the telescope. That's the primary mirror of this telescope. And so that mirror is capturing the light and that light is coming up, being reflected up here. There's another mirror and that mirror is like on a slant and that sends the light up through this focusing tube. Well, inside this focusing tube is the corrector lens that I was talking about. And so, the problem is that with a reflector telescope, you're gonna use what's called a collimator. And the reason you're gonna use this is because the primary mirror, the mirror in the center here that's reflecting the light up into the focal tube, and in this case, the corrector lens is inside this focal tube. So all of that has to be perfectly aligned. If those are out of alignment, it messes up your optics and you're gonna have distortion. So typically what you, people use is, this is uh, you know, made by Savoni, and it's one of these collimators. And what it does, see if I can get a, a light here. So what it does is, if you see on my hand the light, I'm gonna take this collimator and I'm gonna remove the eyepiece normally. I'm gonna put this in the focusing tube and then, based upon whether or not this is aligned properly, I'm going to center the red light in this, there's like a bullseye here, and I'm going to make adjustments to the primary mirror or to this mirror in the front that reflects the light up the focusing tube. And I'm going to make adjustments until I get that bullseye centered in the collimator. 
why is this a problem with the design of this telescope? The reason that's a problem is, if we want to put our collimator tool in to do our alignment, we can't just do that because this has a corrector lens inside of it. And now what we have to do is, we have to take this apart. So the way that we do this is we, there are two screws here, and we have to loosen these two screws. These screws are holding the focuser knobs against the actual tube itself, and the tube slides out. So inside of this tube at the end, there's your corrector lens. This corrector lens cannot be inside here to do our collimation. We have to remove that. So we take a tool like this, and you see there are two slots here. And we take that tool and we would put it in those slots, and we would loosen that corrector lens. We would turn it out. So now we don't have our corrector lens in our focusing tube. We would reassemble it. And at the same time, you see this corrector lens that I removed from the focus, focusing tube? Well, now I've probably gotten fingerprints on that and I'll have to clean it. I also need to remember which direction was it turned when I took it out of the tube so that I put it in the same direction, right? And so I'll have to clean that and also deal with making sure I don't turn it around. Some people have said they put it on the side, they put a slight mark with an arrow and that way they always know which way to turn this corrector lens when they're reinstalling it in the focal tube. So now you can see that what I would have to do is, if I want to use the collimator, now I had to tighten these screws back down on my focal, uh, focuser control. You don't tighten these, over tighten them. You can get them a little too tight. And so now I'm back in business where my focuser will turn and then I would uh, reinsert the collimator. But basically you can see that now I would be in business to do my collimation. As you can see, I couldn't just do this collimation and put my collimation tool in. I had to disassemble the focusing tube. That's the only way that I could do that, which that is a great inconvenience because um, what's going to happen if you use a telescope like this? I'm not saying you have to do it every time you use the telescope but depending on whether or not you bump your telescope you may throw your mirrors out of alignment and this means you'll have to do the collimation and to do the collimation you're having to disassemble this fo focuser tube and remove the correcting eyepiece so that you can do your collimation which that's a huge pain and most people are not going to want to do that so i will put that back and normally you would clean that i'm not worried about cleaning it and the reason is I'm not planning on using this telescope. I, I've not used this telescope for some time now. I used it initially in the beginning when I was trying to do everything I could to make it work. And I really struggled to find a way to get this telescope to work for me and to be a, you know, an enjoyable experience to use. So it's basically a setting in um, a box most of the time. I had to take it out of the box, put it back together so that I could um, go through this video and show you what I learned about. It. Okay, so we have our uh, focuser tube back in and minor adjustment tightening. Well, I hope you found hearing my experience with this telescope helpful. And as I mentioned in the beginning, I created a series of these videos just to keep them brief. You could look at the ones that you were interested in where I talk about the different reasons that I really wouldn't recommend this telescope. You might want to check out some of the others and they're in the description of this video. If you enjoy videos of this type dealing with astronomy and astrophotography, I also encourage you to subscribe to my channel. Leave any comments you have after you watch the video. I always enjoy hearing the viewers feedback and I'm wishing you clear skies.